Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the intermediate regulation of blood pressure. So when such a question is asked for the exams, you have to start with an introduction which should contain the definition of blood pressure. So we know blood pressure is the lateral pressure that is exerted by the column of blood on the walls of the blood vessels while flowing through the vessels. So when blood is flowing through the vessels, it will exert a pressure on the walls of the blood vessels and that is called blood pressure. Okay. And we know this normal range is around 120 and 80 uh, millimeters of mercury, but it is maintained so by various regulatory mechanisms. So what are the various regulatory mechanisms? We've got short term regulation, intermediate regulation as well as long term regulation. Okay, now we can move on to the topic proper, which is intermediate regulation. So intermediate regulation of blood pressure means it, it is it takes more time than the short term regulation, but shorter than the long term regulation. See, we had said that short term regulation takes at least uh, it is rapid. It takes just seconds to minutes to regulate the BP, whereas intermediate regulation may takes hours to days for regulation of BP. Okay. So what are the three basic mechanisms that come under intermediate regulation? The first one is renin angiotensin mechanism. Second is capillary fluid shift mechanism. And the third is stress relaxation mechanism. Okay. So we'll see each one by one. First is renin angiotensin mechanism. So how does renin angiotensin help in regulation of BP? So for example, if there's a drop in blood pressure, what will happen? Because of the, that will be detected by the juxtaglomerular apparatus of the kidneys. Okay. And they will produce renin. And what will renin do? See, we know that from the liver, there is a uh, that is the, the production of angiotensinogen. So, renin can convert this angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. And further, the lungs will produce angiotensin converting enzyme to convert it to angiotensin 2. So, see, because of this renin, angiotensinogen is finally converted to angiotensin 2 okay and thus when once angiotensin 2 is produced this can produce an intense vasoconstriction which will help to bring back the bp to normal so this is how the renin angiotensin mechanism helps in regulating the blood pressure okay so basically renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 angiotensin converting enzyme will convert angiotensin 1 to 2 and this angiotensin 2 can cause intense vasoconstriction thereby bring back the BP to normal. So what will happen if BP increases? So suppose here instead of drop in blood pressure, it was an increase in blood pressure. What will happen? Renin will not be produced and angiotensin 2 will not be produced. Okay. So this is renin angiotensin mechanism. Next is capillary fluid shift mechanism. Again, we will take an example. So whenever there is a decrease in blood pressure, what will happen? See here, the the blood is flowing through these arteries right so when there is a fall in blood pressure what will happen the capillary pressure will also decrease and when the capillary pressure is decreased the fluid is absorbed from the surrounding surrounding tissues to the capillary so there will be a absorption of uh, fluid from the tissues into the capillaries thus the fluid volume the blood volume in the circulation will increase so by the time the blood reaches the vein, the blood volume must have increased and this will cause an increase in blood pressure. So this is called capillary fluid shift mechanism. So when there is a decrease in BP, what will happen? The capillary pressure will decrease and the fluid will move from the interstitium into the capillaries and thus the blood volume will increase and the, thereby it will increase the blood pressure. The vice versa is true also. So see, suppose there is an increased blood pressure, what will happen? fluid will move out of the capillaries so blood volume will decrease okay so this is how capillary fluid shift mechanism helps in regulation of bp and the third is stress relaxation mechanism so what is stress relaxation mechanism again suppose there's an increase in blood pressure so see here suppose there's an increase in blood pressure so what will happen to the tension on the walls of the blood vessel it will increase there'll be more tension on the blood vessel wall right when there is more tension on the blood vessel wall, because it is a smooth muscle, it will cause relaxation of those smooth muscles and thereby the blood pressure decreases. So when the tension on the walls increases because they are smooth muscles, they will relax and thus the blood pressure decrease and that is called stress relaxation mechanism. So in a nutshell, when intermediate regulation of blood pressure is, we can first write about 
the renin angiotensin mechanism and then capillary fluid shift mechanism and finally stress relaxation mechanism so i hope this concept is clear thank you